with with one day left until election night and the squatter trailing and the squatter trailing in numerous state and national polls, forty five's inner circle is increasingly whispering the same thought, our fucking guy blew it. A forecast of a Biden White House is not is not one they welcome, but it's one of many. That um it's but it's one many of them have come to finally accept after a year of coronavirus deaths, economic devastation, and a racial and civil unrest have throttled the administration run by a man that they believe has failed to rise to the occasion even on just a purely messaging front. I believe the betting markets, which say there's a 60% chance that Biden wins and a 40% chance that 45 does, Stephen Moore, conservative economist who advises 45 on economic and COVID-19 related matters, said in an interview on th Thursday. Explaining his pessimism, Moore, Moore cited several factors, including the still rising cases of the virus in certain parts of the United States. Moore has said that he hoped that the gross domestic product report that came out on Thursday would have given the squatters campaign a boost, and it didn't. He even recalled visiting the White House last month, during which he told the squatter that the that the report was going to be a real October surprise, that he could really play up for the play up to the voters, and that and that two of them then brainstormed ways to aggressively promote the out the um, the, uh, the coming numbers. But shortly after the positive looking report came out on Thursday, showing that the economy grew at least grew at a thirty three percent annual rate last quarter, Moore found it hard to muster optimism about the political uh, benefits of it. I really don't have a good feeling about this. He conceded. When um were more alone in his skepticism, it could be written off as the superstitious cup half empty musings of an advisor who have, who abjectly is um abjectly I mean sorry abjectly is terrified of a Biden squad of a Biden presidency of a Biden presidency, but he's not alone. Out of the out of the sixteen knowledgeable and well positioned sources across forty five world campaign age repug repug donors. Senior administration officials and close associates of the squatter and and his family, who the Daily Beast interviewed for the story in the in in the week leading up to election day, twenty twenty, only five gave gave forty five comfortable odds at winning. Doug Deason, a high a high dollar forty five nutlicker from Dallas, pegged forty five odds at seventy five percent or better. For instance, six others were confident to varying degrees that Fat S forty five would be relegated to a one term status. The remaining five the five game. Uh, the the remaining five only gave him roughly a fifty percent chance of the um, of that. Of those five, two of them, a White House official said, and a and a and a and a fake friend of the of the squatter, started sounding increasingly pessimistic as the conversation went onward. Dan Eberhart, a chief executive at Canary and another major forty five nutlicker who contributed a hundred thousand to forty five victory this cycle, told the Daily Beast on Thursday evening that if he, if he could go back in time. He wouldn't ha have given a dime of that to the Joint Fundraising Committee for the Squatter's re-election. Basically, the guy said he thinks he, that 45 has a 25% chance of winning the election. His campaign focused on, a, on, exi on exciting his base, not just on, pers uh, on, on... When they say exciting his base, they're talking about exciting his sycophants um, and not pursuing and not um, pursuing people in the center. COVID was a massive headwind that minimized the roaring 45 economy, Eberhard said. The Squatter has struggled to maintain message, message discipline. And the Democrat is, and the Democrats are, is, um, are more highly motivated to vote now, as seen by the record turnout so far. That's not to say that there's not a window for the pre for the squatter to win. It's just being realistic that he's the underdog in this contest. The um, Eberhardt, who's a businessman, continued, "If I could redo my donations this cycle, I would put it all on red again." He said, "Honestly, I would have have put all my donations toward holding the Senate. I'd never thought the Senate would be in play." Eberhardt doesn't have to be the only 45 nutlicker with a bit of a buyer's remorse. According to the data provided by the Center for Responsive Politics of of, um, of the more than 1,100 individuals who gave the, the $5,400 legal maximum to 45's 2016 campaign, or who exceeded the maximum and had to be issued refunds, about 450 of them have donated have not donated a penny to the squatter's re-election campaign this cycle. The squatter has far more donors this cycle of every donation range, including those who have given the legal maximum than he did during the 2016 campaign, but if each of those 450 donors had also maxed out to 45's 2020 campaign, they would have provided a substantial $2.5 in additional funding for this year. And some high dollar and some high dollar donors to 45's 2017 inauguration fest festivities haven't just stopped giving to the squatter altogether. They're actively bankroll bankrolling the Democratic opposition. Um, when reached up for comment on Friday afternoon, um, Jason Miller, who's a dumbass, on the, um, on the campaign replied, Mood is great. 45 will be reelected. I don't worry about the bed voters too much. Of course, 45 will not be reelected. He will be. He will. He will lose tomorrow. Um, 
But others senior age to 45 were also girding themselves for the squatter's fury over the election results. The, sort, the um, three sources familiar with the matter said that 45 has repeatedly stressed how low of an opinion he has of Biden as a candidate, and he has said how deeply embarrassing it would be for him if he managed to lose to him this year. Aides and close associates who have spoken to the squatter in recent days say that, the, that he has consistently argued behind closed doors that he is going to um, emerge victorious, which he's not, and ignoring much of the, of the available polling data and declining to talk much, if at all. But about what would happen if he didn't. 45 would regularly argue that it, that it doesn't even make sense that Biden could win when you look at his at his crowd sizes in the campaign's closing weeks versus Biden's. If, if it were anyone else, I'd call it Denel, said one such associate. Two 45 administration officials working on foreign policy had told the Daily Beast in the past week that they were convinced the squatter will lose and have instead prioritized making it harder for a squ for a for a President Biden to reverse their policy advancements, including with regards to re-entering the Iran nuclear deal. Still, there are, there are those close to 45 and in prominent, in prominent repug circles who say they remain convinced that 45 will win, win in a walk. Pollsters and naysayers will be damned. I say there's a 70% chance he's reelected and a 30% chance that Biden wins. I, I would say there's a 70% chance Biden wins and only and only a 30% chance that, that Cheeto wins, the former House Speaker and an outsized advisor to 45. I think most of the establishment polls are just playing crazy. I think they're go done badly. I think they're missing what's actually going on. 45 is clearly going to win the Electoral College, but lose their popular vote due to California. Um, I don't think that 45 is going to win this year. But if you like the video, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, Random Mike, and also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. Thanks for listening.